Hello and welcome back to another fantastic tutorial from Renderosity on Poser Pro 11 and Poser 11. I'm Mark Bremer and in this movie we will be looking at subdivision level morph targets and creating smooth body joint translations with some of these new tools we've got to play with. I need to mention this is an advanced tutorial so I'm skipping over a lot of basics in how to work with the program. In fact, there's a bunch of free tutorials here at Renderosity that cover working with morph dials and creating morph targets, aging characters, so know that those are here as well. What I want to explore in this movie specifically is some of the new tool sets in Poser 11 that allow you to do some of those things a little more easily and consistently and give you a greater degree of flexibility than we've ever had inside of Poser. So what are we looking at right here? It's a basic low resolution square. Let me actually make this a little bit larger so we can zoom in. This is a single polygon square. It's made up of four points and there's uh, just, <laughs> I don't want to call it a mesh because there's no mesh in there. Let me turn on my textured line here. One of the new features we'll take a look at, or the principal one right here, is going to be found inside of the Properties tab. Now let me set the stage for what we're doing. As we work with subdivision, I've mentioned uh, previously that Poser is a content manipulation program, not a content creation program. We're starting to blur the boundaries a little bit when we get into things like subdivision because it's a modeling tool that anybody that creates content and some of the pro applications is very familiar with. It's a way for you to add information into a polygon space. We see down here in the lower right hand portion of the interface subdivision levels. We've got a preview version and a render version. You can see them differently and as I click once here we'll see our screen light up a little bit. You'll notice that well suddenly we have four and if I click up to two subdivisions, uh, magically somehow our object shrunk there. I think we're seeing a little bit of a bug here. Let me come back. Well, isn't that special? There. Hmm. Can't tell you why that happened. I'm working with uh, some very, very new versions of the program. And sometimes, well, it's got some unexpected behaviors. All right, so now that we're back to where we're supposed to be, You'll notice that with only two subdivisions right here, we've got 16 squares, and if I click that again, we wind up with uh, 64. So you can see the data being applied, or I should say the number of polygons goes up significantly with each subdivision. Not such a big deal with this square, but when we start working with figures, that is a massive issue, and that's the beauty of working with subdivision levels. It allows you to add information to an object and then go ahead and scale it back so it doesn't slow down your system when you're working with it. Really big thing. So for example, yeah, this is a basic square, but if we wanted to create a little bit of an environment for our character, we could start creating hillsides, rotate this 90 degrees, and start creating a nice space to go ahead and maybe set our characters in along with a car. I don't know. It's up to you but we can go ahead and control this. Let me increase the level of subdivision a little bit and bring in the next thing I want to take a look at here which happens to be how we go ahead and work with the morphs and what that means as we start blending these things together. So we'll engage our morph tool set here and we get our contextual dialog box that pops up. Let's go with pull and see what we can get right here. Very large brush and I'll click and you know what I don't see a lot of stuff going on here sometimes we saw the uh, square shrink down on us well we're just experiencing something really neat okay well, let's do this what I'm going to do is currently surface is selected with the program which means that in the pull it should do it 90 degrees to the surface I'm not seeing that we're seeing a bug in action so this wasn't happening with an earlier version I was working with so surprise. Let's turn on the screen here and screen in and out. What this is is it's referring to your actual computer monitor screen. So it's going to move these polygons and points perpendicular to my screen. So if I click and uh, pull down a little bit this comes towards it. As I rotate that we can see it. Notice how it's pulled up slightly? That's because I wasn't perfectly straight across from it. 
I rotate to this side just a little bit and do it, it's going to come right towards the screen, my computer monitor, and we'll see now that, yeah, it's pulled over to the side. Let's go ahead and turn back on surface and see if this uh, changes this just a little bit. Okay, now it's behaving. See how it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, it's being special. If I want to smooth this out a little bit, and I've got a very teeny brush. Let me make that a little bit larger. Isn't it nice to see that other people have issues with programs? All right, I'm smoothing that out a little bit. So let me explain a checkbox that's down here that has not been down here before. If you've worked with Poser, you've been able to do some subdivision things. Something really important, though, is bake down for subdivision. This is new. What that means is that this information about these increased levels of detail is now going to travel with the object whether we have subdivision turned on or not. So we can go in and create a bunch of detail. If this was a uh, very odd looking landscape I could rotate the entire you know, plane and we've got uh, three mountains and a, a lake starting right here. But I may not want to work with it in the full subdivision capacity. So this bake down is a 3D modeling term and it means that that information travels with the object. So when I bring down the subdivision we'll see that we're still getting some deformation, not deformation, deformation on the mesh right here. And that information is traveling with it, so we can still get a sense of what's going on. With bake down for subdivision turned off, when you create these morphs, it only will remember it at a certain subdivision level. So I created these hills and little valleys here at a subdivision of four. If this was not baked down, meaning that when I that information travels with it and as we reduce the polygon count, if we hadn't done that, it would these changes, let me slow down. These changes would only show up at a subdivision level of four if we didn't have baked down for subdivision turned on. It's nice to always leave this turned on because then you get a ever so subtle uh, change in shape as we reduce the subdivisions you can still see what's going on you don't have to know that that option is there if you only want these changes to show at level four and above then you turn off bake down for subdivision so think of the down meaning down and subdivision less and less if you want those morphs to travel then you leave that on okay I think you've got that well let's get out of here I'll close the morph tab right here and let's actually just create a new scene. And if I know anything, Andy should uh, populate that scene pretty quickly. All right, so we've learned about subdivision. We can do that with a character right here. You'll notice that we've got the chest kind of selected by default. If I come up here and grab the character's left collar, we've got the option to subdivide separately from figure. This is a really important distinction. If we come up to the body level right here, we can subdivide the entire character. This would be, and you can tell already that there is a singular level of subdivision on at render time. There's preview when you're working with it and what we see, and then there's how much it subdivides as we get to render. Poser is uh, kind of growing up and becoming a more sophisticated program. And this is how it's handled in many, many 3D modeling programs where you work at a on-screen lower resolution so it doesn't bog your system down. And then when you get ready to render, it kind of automatically updates everything and gives you a higher fidelity or higher resolution mesh. All right, that's still a bunch of talk. Let's get in here and start working with it. As I zoom into the character, we can see that on uh, the chest here, we've got a bunch of polygons. Now, this is where we have to be very selective in what we choose to subdivide, if we choose to subdivide. With the entire body selected, Andy 2, if we come over here to parameters, he comes with some morphs. If I say, you know what, we're going to bulk Andy up a little bit. He's been hitting the protein shakes here. As we come in a little bit closer, we can see that with these large polygons right here on the character's shoulder that it truncates. That is that it's no longer a smooth curve and we may want to make that smooth but if I subdivide the whole character 
I wind up with a million polygons here in the chest and I don't really need that. I just need it on the arm. So if I select this arm independently and we come back to properties, now our subdivide says separate from figure. If I engage that and we see half of Andy disappear, this has been a very special program today. I can go ahead and uh, click up one subdivision level. So the preview and the render are at one. You'll notice, or I had mentioned earlier, that the render was set to increase subdivision at render time. Now our preview happens to simply be matching what's going to happen when it goes to render time. I could increase the render subdivision. We'll see no on-screen change. But if I update the preview, then we see, yeah, we're getting a ton of uh, mesh objects right here, or polygons. So that is how this is working independently now. When we come back in with the Morph tool, this is where we would bulk up a shoulder, add some muscle striation if we actually wanted to model that in. And we can go around and do that to all the body parts if we want. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. It's going to go back to the basic level right here. So we're seeing this uh, very specific level, subdivision level morph target capability inside of unique parts of the character and also at a landscape level if we want to do that. So let's kind of connect these together a little bit and decide how we might work and combine these two features when we start working with translation and scaling and things like that with the character. If I come up here and select the character's shoulders and we go to parameters and we say, you know what, let's uh, let's move this out. I'm going to be creating a superhero character. We get a very bad translation going on. It simply grabs the identified area, which is that left collar, and pulls it out. It follows the instructions. But we get this stretched polygon here. This is important and uh, modelers are going to be familiar with this. The way computer programs think about the polygons on this and the topology is that they assume that all the squares basically have the same amount of space in them. It's not true. And so it kind of fakes it. When you get something stretched like this, it might render up and look OK until you add a texture that might be um, a texture map based one. No doubt you've seen textures on characters, and maybe created some yourself by accident, where when the polygons stretch, the texture on the top stretches out and it looks just terrible. Um, what used to be nice detail is suddenly a smear of color or something like that. Well, what we want to be able to do now with the new capabilities to smooth these translations is that it's kind of a, uh, I don't know, a neat hybrid between the subdivision ability and uh, how we can go ahead and control what's going on. Let's go ahead and open up our joint editor here. And we'll see that it's a spatial type of a joint relationship right now what we can do is come down and create a smooth translation. And it says, hey, it can't be undone. That's OK here. And we'll see that uh, it does OK. It kind of evens out that stretching we saw. But if we want to smooth it even further, then we go ahead and we bring in our Morph tool. And uh, Smooth is activated right now. Let's see how big our brush is. That's maybe a little too large. So a place where we will probably see this more than anywhere is on the back. There are fewer polygons in the back as compared to the front of the chest where we want these nice smooth curves here around the pec region. No such thing in the back. So we get this stretching going on that is highly undesirable. So let's go ahead and uh, run this smooth tool here and it's starting to, if you will, normalize a little bit of the, some of the stretching that's going on and make this translation a little cleaner. If I look up here and go, ah, that's a little stretchy up there. Let me go ahead and even that out. Shrink my brush up a little bit more. Getting a little bit of stretching right here and maybe something that almost looks more like pinching over here. So I can go ahead and smooth this and relax this out here. Now, great, you're doing that. Super. Uh, what does this have to do exactly with some of the subdivision? Well, if you're working with the character and we start adding details to the arm here, we want to 
I don't know, add bolts, you could do that. Those types of things. You can subdivide this area a little bit more and go ahead and create those levels of detail with the morph brush and smooth those out. Let me blend this a little bit more here. So if we had a skin texture on our character here, it wouldn't be so stretched out. So to wrap up just a little bit, this is a fairly complex combination of abilities that's new to Poser. We can go ahead and increase the polygon count of any individual shape in a character or in a landscape, and we can use the Morph tool to change the topology. When we're doing that, we now have the ability here to kind of blend that capability along with the joint editor and create some smooth translations between, on the character level, smooth translations between this combination of increased subdivisions where we add detail maybe and then how it relates to the rest of the figure. Once this is done, since uh, if you've been going through the series, you know that we can go ahead and mirror some of these joints over to the other side and sizes. So it's very easy to replicate what we do on one side over to the other side. So the ability to create custom characters now in a very easy way and a way that looks, uh, well, professional and doesn't destroy the textures is, uh, well, it's easier than ever to go ahead and do that. So there's an introduction and working with the new subdivision level editor and the smooth joint capability and scale that we've never had inside of Poser before.